Well, Patengo Mukunden, what's your sense on the UN um, resolution that is, is being circulated at the, at the UN? Will that make a difference in the ability of nations to respond to the piracy threat? Uh, I think it will, uh, and uh, particularly in a situation like Somalia, where you have a law enforcement vacuum, something like this would be uh, extremely useful. Uh, it is still one of many steps which needs to be taken, of course, because in any naval vessel trying to intervene in these situations, the greatest, the, the, the concern really is to ensure that nothing is done which will endanger the crew on board. So subject to that, it will uh, it'll certainly help. And yet, and Jim Robbins, if, if the question is not doing anything to risk the crew, if, if uh, ship owners make it clear that they will do whatever it takes to protect the crew, doesn't that necessarily then lead to the, the kind of situation we've seen recently where that means paying huge ransoms uh, in cash right away and then thus encouraging more piracy? It could mean that uh, if the ship owners think it's worth their investment um, to rescue their ship, they might want to slow down the process a little bit and not respond immediately because the more you do that, the more you encourage it. I think it would be uh, incumbent in the circumstances for countries to behave more like the French have. Uh, one thing about pirates is they're relatively easier to locate than, say, your generic terrorists who can kind of go inland and disappear, and pirates are going to be along the coast somewhere. So you can keep them under surveillance during this whole process, and then after the fact, kind of go in and give them consequences. Now, the money will be gone, no doubt. It'll be gone immediately. But if you can sort of impose consequences on the people who are engaged in activity, then I don't see uh, how it could continue to expand because the people, it, they're opportunists. They, they want to take easy targets out, and they don't want to have any consequences come back to them. So even a little bit of investment in that, I think, would reap a good reward. Charles Dragonet, what's your sense of, of what the impact of, of the increase in piracy is having on, on shipping as a, as a general matter? After we saw this, this last week an attack on a Japanese um, oil tanker, uh, oil markets responded to that. Uh, oil markets have been having no trouble going higher as it is, but uh, they managed a little extra spike on, on that news. Um, is this, at this point, a, a marginal cost and a nuisance, or is it rising to the level where it could actually have effects on um, significant markets, whether oil or, or other things that are shipped? I don't believe it can have any significant or lasting effect on the markets. The markets are simply too large, and as you point out, they're already being pressured upward. They don't need another excuse. Uh, we've never seen a trade stopped or an insurance cost become unbearable because of piracy. We have seen local perturbations, certainly World Food Program food deliveries to Somalia were severely disrupted and had to go overland out of, out of Kenya, which increases the chances of theft and loss in transit, loss en route. But I don't see a macro effect on trade. Most of the trade that's going past Somalia has nothing to do with Somalia. Most of it is impelled by world market forces that simply aren't going to notice the loss of a million dollars in ransom here or, or 1.2 million there. What will happen, however, is we would expect what would happen, and what we're not seeing yet is the robust response of the French, the response of the Spanish, ought to be discouraging the pirates who do go after the easiest targets and the ones that cost them the least. So far, that effect has not been apparent, and the pirates seem more motivated by what others have gotten away with rather than the consequences with the ones that have gotten, gotten caught. And that's a market force that has yet to come into play. Patengo Mukunden, what's your sense of uh, how much risk there is that this increase in piracy will affect uh, world commerce? Well, uh, as uh, Charles has pointed out, it hasn't uh, had any impact on, uh, on commerce so far. Uh, and um, uh, because the number of vessels which are attacked are still a very small proportion of the ships which are uh, transiting these points. But uh, the consequences for the vessel itself and the crew are severe. Uh, we have seen a very large tanker being attacked recently, and it is those kind of very vulnerable vessels, if they are attacked, uh, you know, um, may begin to have an effect on insurance rates and others. So it is really very important, in our view, that uh, the uh, steps should be taken by uh, the authorities to bring these attacks down 
as far as possible. Jim Robbins, about 20 seconds left. Will, will the steps be taken that are needed? I think the pressure is out there now, uh, particularly the United States and France are leading the way in the UN, and uh, hopefully once the resolution is passed by the Security Council, other countries will rally to this and start to take the appropriate steps. I'm afraid that's going to have to be the last word. We're out of time for today, but I'd like to thank my guests. Charles Dragonet, a senior merchant shipping analyst in the Office of Naval Intelligence at the U.S. Navy. The director of the Intelligence Center at Trinity Washington University, James Robbins. And joining us from our London studio, Patengo Mukundan, director of the International Maritime Bureau. Before we go, I'd like to invite you to send us your questions or comments. You can reach us through our website at www.voanews.com slash on the line. For On the Line, I'm Eric Felton.